Let's do my offering right now. Uh, if you got your offering, remember the offering place back there in the back door. We're still trying to follow some some uh, uh, semblance of, of for the COVID because it, it just keeps. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Amen. So go back there in the back. You can drop it off in the play. If you haven't already dropped it off, you can on the way out. Either way, if you've already dropped it off, just hold your hand up. If you haven't dropped it off, hold it up. And let's do this together. To you, that it please you, O Lord. This is my seed. Although it leaves my hand, it will never leave my life. You will multiply. Accept my seed, O Lord. Give the Lord another hand clap for prayer. Uplifted hands, special needs, lost arms. Let's go to the Lord. Father, we thank you for the time and opportunity we have to be in your house. And Father, we just ask you to minister mightily this morning to each and every one here. And Father, we just ask that your presence would be here this morning, touching these lives, touching these situations, and being with us in the service today. Father, bring forth the message that you have for us to hear this morning that will draw us closer to you and bring forth change. And Father, we depart. We shall say we've been in the presence of God and give testimony. We thank you for everything that's said in Christ Jesus' name, the church. Give Lord another hand clap. How many know that Jesus is just something, something about that? There's times when I'm going through something. Have you ever been going through something and, and you want to be able to pray and you just can't say anything? You don't know what to pray for. You don't know how to pray. You just know that you need to connect with God. I learned a lot of trick years ago. I was I was in I had a I had a dream, and in the dream I was under a very powerful attack from Satan. And what was in my dream was what was happening on my job. And 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 it just God showed me in a different way. And and I was trying to put verses, I was trying to do this and that. And finally, and Satan was winning, and, 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 and finally I heard a voice say, just whisper my name. Just whisper. And so I whispered it, and all of a sudden I could feel the tension start to leave. And I start, went from whispering it to, hop, to saying it to hollering it. And when I got to the point where I was hollering, I felt all the pressure relief, and I felt myself stand upright. And from that time on, what I do is when I can't do anything else, I just say his name. Because you know what? God's got this. And all I got to do is say, God, I'm, I'm, calling on you. I'm calling on you, Jesus. I'm calling on you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Because there's something about that name. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead and go, y'all. Jesus.
of the papers up here because we were scrambling. Let's see. You know, you think you got it and you don't have it, and you got it and you don't have it. And so, just in case I didn't have enough, I put a whole bunch more up there. <laughs> kind of like I told y'all one day I was lost. And Linda kept saying, you're lost, you're lost, you're lost. And I said, I kept speeding up. And she said, you're lost. I said, I know, and I kept speeding up. She said, why are you speeding up? And she said, we're still lost. She said, yeah, but I'm making good time. That's right. <laughs> so, there you go. Making good time. Are you ready? Uh, 
I, I need that. She died, and, and uh, we were going to do the service, and uh, uh, the pastor got COVID. And I remember when I got COVID, and Wayne stepped in for me right at the last minute. Well, here I was now. This guy's got COVID, and said his backup's got COVID. I mean, I got COVID also. And so, can you do it? And I said, uh, now remember, when I just got to him about the funeral on Saturday. He said, it's going to be at Southside High School. And I said, well, just don't call me. Well, I said, this place wouldn't have to be a Southside High School. And he said, yep. I said, okay. And so uh, uh, I go to the funeral home, and I'm thinking it's going to be, you know, going to the funeral home, and made the Southside League. And he tells me, he said, no, we're blocking two hours for this and two hours for the graveside. So it's a four hour service. And I said, okay. And so then that night was a couple hours, you know, trying to get it straight. You know, at the funeral home, and then the next Saturday I left at 11 o'clock from my house, got back at 5. And all the way there, I kept hearing, don't call me, yeah, right. Don't call me, yeah, right. And in the middle of all that, there was other things that were going on. There was people I was trying to help, while I'm in Lowe's looking for things I'm counseling. Because a lot of times I do something called text therapy. If you don't want to talk, there's something called text therapy where actually, we, if you don't mind waiting, uh, you can text me your question or text me your problem, and we can correspond by text. And it really works very well, especially when somebody's working and can't get off to come over here or meet them somewhere. And so I was doing text therapy with four, four people. Text therapy with four people, and I was doing plumbing therapy for me and my wife. <laughs> now, I do like to take a bath every now and then. Especially as I love, you know, church today, I need to take a bath at least by church time. Okay. So, you never know what's going to happen, what's going to go up. And so, it just pays to always be ready because life is crazy. And if anybody thinks their life is going to be lined with sugar plums and Skittles, you're so mistaken. And when people start getting things, they think, and start going through things, they think, well, does God not love me anymore? That's so crazy. God loves you. Just because you're going through something doesn't mean he doesn't love you. You know, and have you ever felt like you were just left behind? You know, I, I like this. There was a group of friends went deer hunting and paired off in twos for the day. That night, one of the hunters returned alone, staggering under the weight of an eight-pound buck. Where's Henry, the others asked? Well, Henry had a stroke of some kind. He's a couple miles back on the trail. The hunter replied, he said, you left Henry laying out there and carried a deer back? He said, tough call. He said, but I figured no one was going to steal Henry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you felt like, bless you, you're Henry. <laughs> you know, life has just left you behind. Well, we're going to talk about this, I don't know, maybe two weeks, maybe more. But we're going to talk about dealing with adversity and passing through some dark valleys. You know, that, that family blessed our heart yesterday was passing through a dark valley. And so I felt privileged and honored to be able to help that family yesterday. All joking aside, I felt privileged and honored. And there's two, especially there's two things that always get me quickly. And usually I don't even ask for what time is it and say yes. And that is if they say cancer was involved because of Bethany. And my mama and my brother like cancer or a veteran. Those two right there, you know, I'm on it. Because veterans and cancer just really get uh, to my heart, and this was a cancer patient. So, so uh, I, I felt honored, honored to do this. Uh, but still, my plans were to do plumbing. <laughs> Guess what's still not fixed? Plumbing. Uh, plumbing. Amen. But at least we got it propped up. I could take. A, I did take a shower. Don't be afraid to come up and be prayed for. Amen. <laughs> And my wife, my wife was reading about, you know, because we keep having these effects. We had COVID a couple of weeks ago, and I'm still having that brain fog in my throat. As the day goes by, I start losing my, my voice. And my wife was feeling kind of like she calls it a, a gummy in her lungs, but it's getting better. And we're looking at what I call long-term COVID, and, and it said one effects is brain fog. And I said, well, that's it. And she said, uh, and, 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 and bad smell. And I said, well, that's just a shower. <laughs> She said, not you, I'm talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can go ahead and laugh. Y'all had that problem too. Yeah. Amen. Okay. So now, <laughs> now passing through uh, dark valleys. Now, now I want you to get your, your Bible out. We're gonna we're gonna this is gonna be so simple. Matter of fact, it's gonna so simple that you might just get your Bibles out anyway. Get them out. Turn to Psalm 23. Psalm 23. 
Y'all say this with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me beside the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let's go back to verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod my staff, they comfort me. Stretch with me hands this way. God, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, that you are alive and well, and that you are on your throne. We thank you, God, that although we don't understand the trials that we get in life, we don't always understand the pressure that we're under, and we don't understand the, the, the way they can, the nature of the trials, that we, it's just hard sometimes to comprehend, and if we're not careful, we'll think that you don't love us anymore, that we have to earn your favor, and that we haven't earned enough favor. That's why we're going to the trials. God, today, right now, help us to understand that that is so far from the truth. Help us to understand that the, that the path that you have lined for us that has victory on the other side is lined with victories all the way, but it's also lined with pain. And God, you think you take our pain and make it productive. And you never waste our pain. In the name of Jesus, we love you. And we praise your name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. On the way down, tell somebody, uh, uh, the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing shall be impossible. All right. I'm going to just kind of I'm going to take my time this morning. It's not going to be long. When I take my time, you know, it's like I was watching uh, I was watching Duck Dynasty. And their air conditioner was down. And they got Mountain Man. You ever seen Duck Dynasty of Mountain Man? He talks like this. And their air conditioner was down. He looked up and said, can you figure out what's wrong with me? He looked up there and said, it's broke. <laughs> And he said, well, it's 100 degrees, or can you fix it? He said, yes. He said, how long will it take? He said, about 15 minutes. He didn't even look at it yet. And, 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 and Willie said, your 15 minutes is the equivalent of our four hours. <laughs> that was on when I left. It was still weren't fixed when I left. <laughs> it was hot. So it ain't going to take long a day. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. God's good. All right. It's okay to have fun in God's house. I'm going to ask you, we're going to start off with a question. This is a quiz. You know it's going to be a quiz today, did you? I, I want you to get a piece of paper and a pencil out. If you got one, I want you to write this question down. This is an awesome question. Why do you get uh, in a land where all you have is sunshine every day? Wouldn't you like to be in a place where there was sunshine every day? No rain, just all sunshine. Man, oh man, wouldn't that be awesome, huh? So here it is. What do you get in a land where you're all, all you have is sunshine every day and no rain? Now let me just give you some, I'm going to give you some, some, some prelude answers, okay? First, uh, you don't have any violence. I'm going to get, I'm going to get, I'm going to meddle right now. I'm going to meddle hard. We have a generation that thinks they're going to have sunshine every minute of the day. And if they don't get sunshine, they're not living the life, they're not keeping up with their friends. We got to have the latest grace. We got to have sunshine, 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 sunshine. And what happens is there's no violence in their life. Number two, growth is stunted. You're blocked. Because if all you got sunshine, you may not grow. In our own life, if all we get is sunshine, I promise you, you won't grow. As a matter of fact, you will do less than grow. You will back up. And then you'll be unthankful. If all you get is sunshine, you're just unthankful. God's just blessing me. You know, I see people say, I'm just living on the blessings of God. I don't have any problems. But either they're lying or they're on some good medicine. <laughs> so, you get unthankful. You're blind. You're blind. And then bland is boring. You know, 
I hear kids all the time, I'm bored, I'm bored, Dad, I'm bored, Mom, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. They got an iPad in one hand and a cell phone in the other hand and they're watching Netflix on the TV. They got everything going on around them. And I'm thinking back, you know, when you see them through their room, you go in their room and it's like a command station for, for Apollo 19. And they're bored. In my day, Mama just took you out and said, go play with some sticks, son. And she didn't say go play with some sticks, she said go pick a stick. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can remember my grandma was, we thought we were Roy Rogers and all of them. We were, we were tough stuff. And grandma had some extra tobacco sticks and twine. And so we took a twine and tied the tobacco sticks. And they were our horses. We were riding all around and kicking the dirt so we were being shot at. We weren't bored. We were dirty, but we weren't bored. So again, all sunshine. If all you get in your life is sunshine, what do you get? Here back to our question. What do you get in a land where all you have is sunshine every day and no rain? <laughs> Somewhere too. Yeah. Especially those that have rings and no hair. <laughs> Desert. Could it be that some of us are walking around in the desert today because we're not reaping the benefits of the rain. We're not reaping the benefits of the problems. We're not reaping the benefits of the pain. But instead we're resisting all of that and we're crying out to God for sunshine and not realizing that we're called a desert in our life. Now the Bible's full of deserts. I mean full of deserts. And so uh, I'm just gonna give a few, just, just three. Okay, there's, there's the valley of trouble, the valley of Achan in Joshua chapter 7 verse 26. They piled a great heap of stones over Achan, which remains to this day. This is why the place has been called the valley of trouble ever since. So the Lord was no longer, so once they appeased him, he was no longer anger because they took, what happened was, they were supposed, they were going to the land and land of promise. And they were supposed to take everything from the land, but when they went to the land of promise, they were supposed to take everything. This was the, the first the first battle, the first win, and God had helped them in this win. They were supposed to take all the gold and silver and dedicate it to God. And he hid it under his, under his floor, under his bed. Instead of giving God all God asked for, he took it and hid it. Now, none of us do that, right? Right. All right. And so, so, so because of that, it caused everybody to suffer. And it was called the Valley of Trouble. And so, once they took care of business, then God took care of them. Then there's the Valley of Weeping. Everybody, every one of us, that's the Valley of the Weeping Willow. Every last one of us. Psalm uh, 84 and 6. God would like to take this. If he's who passing through the Valley of Baca, the Valley of Weeping, make it a will. Go ahead and take advantage of the pain. I noticed you today thinking, you have lost your ever-loving mind. Take advantage of the pain. I'm here to tell you something right now. If you can learn to take advantage of your pain, it's amazing what God can do. Amen? And then, the valley of deep darkness. Psalm 23 and 4 says, Yea, thou walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, now, just to let you know, there was really, for real, when the shepherds were keeping their flocks, there was a real uh, valley of the shadow of death. There really was. What it was, was to, in order to get good grazing, they would have to go up and down the mountains. As they went up and down the mountains, there was paths that they had to go through. And one of them was a very narrow path, and it was a very hard fall. If you fell off of that path, you would fall to your death. And so it was called the Valley of the Shadow of Death. And what was, was the shepherd, he had his, he had his rod, and he had his staff, and he took the rod and the staff, and he took his sheep, and he maneuvered them up this narrow path called the Valley of the Shadow of Death. As he's going down and up both ways, he's got his crook, and he catches his sheep, and he keeps them on the path. So it takes care of them. I, I like what the New Living Translation calls it. It says, For when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect me, and they comfort me. So this, this, this is going here, we're going here to talk about dark valleys. Okay. Number one, dark valleys are unavoidable. Did you know that? You're not going to get past them. I promise you, you're not going to get past them. 
Life is going to happen to you. Life is going to happen. And I promise you, life isn't always peaches and cream. Life isn't always hunky-dory. Life isn't always skittles and red rainbows. Life is hard. It happens to all of us. You can count on it. You know, uh, come, many times, as we're, as we're coming out of one valley, we're going right into another. And sometimes while we're in one, we run into another valley. And so, we may be especially two or three valleys at one time. Life happens. And you cannot, cannot avoid it. When you get on the road, you know it says, how dangerous it is even just to ride on the highway. I remember, I remember one day I was riding down uh, Highway uh, 33 and I watched the ATM Warthog and I said, he turned around and I'm going to go on the road. He turns around and comes right straight toward me and I'm thinking, wow, that's, that's spooky. And he just stayed right on me and then he passed over me. And I went, whoa, that's rough. I know this isn't war, but that's rough. And so I had me talking to Steve. I said, see, there's that ATM. Well, I just went right over top of me. He said, dude, they were beating you. They were using you for target practice. That's right. And I went, is there another way to go besides 33? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know what? That's how life is. You turn around and you get one thing straight, and then there's another, and there's another. If you are human, if you are human, how many here are human? You're going to experience uh, dark valleys. The Bible says man is born, mankind is born for trouble as surely as sparks fly upward. We're born for trouble. Amen? So first, it's un y'all say unavoidable. Unavoidable. Even the people you think don't have any problems, they got them. Even the people you think don't have any dark valleys, guess what? They got them. And, and, and if you're really close to people, and especially uh, as a pastor over the years, I've seen it where one person said, man, I'd have it made if I was like this person. And I've said this before, but i got to say it again because it's just so valid right here. There was a guy in my church who mentioned owned a gas company, served several counties. He was a multi-millionaire. He bought his car a brand new Lincoln every year. They cash for it. There was a lot of things going on. He hired, he had like a hundred plus people working for him. He had trucks all over the road. And people was that hey, one day he came up to me and he said, you got a problem, Pastor. I said, what? He said, uh, he said, uh, I need I need to donate some money somewhere. I said, what? What's going on? He said, I got him for, for, for taxes. He says, I got I've got a uh, fourteen thousand, I need to donate fourteen thousand five hundred dollars somewhere. He said, you got any ideas? I said, well, it's kind of wild when you say that because the parsonage, we have $14,500 on them. And he said, he smiled. He said, not anymore. He drove off. Everybody said, man, he's got it made, he's got it made, he's got it made, he's got it made. Man, we can be like him, multi-millionaire. You know what? I got a chance to be with him after he got off work at night. I'm going to tell you what happened. He had crippling arthritis. His fingers were just like this. When he had crippling arthritis, he had a bad heart. His neck was that big around. He had to drop around in, a, in one of those little uh, motorized wheelchairs. And he, could barely, he stayed in pain all day long. And the only thing that kept him going was that story. Go to that store, which was right next to his house. And he would come back and go home and eat supper and go to bed. And he laid in bed and cried. He called me out and go sit with him. And one day he called me in his office and I said, what is it, what is it, man? He said, I would give you everything I own right now, everything, if I could just get up and walk to you one time. And I said, I'm so sorry, brother. He said, I, I don't even feel like a man. But I hear the other people say, man, he got it made, he got it made, he got it made, he got all this money, he got all this stuff. And I, I tell him, dude, if y'all only knew, if you only knew, you see, it happens to everybody, even the ones you think that it's not happening to. And on top of that, he had two ponds by his business, and one pond nobody could fish in. Of course, D.C. and Daniel not good, but nobody could fish in because that was his son's pond. 
and his son had went upstairs one night while well, this is going on. He can't move, nothing's, everything's bad. His son goes upstairs one night and commits suicide. And so there was his son's pond, nobody came on that pond. When DC Daniel got there, he said, Boys, I got a pond for y'all. You see, he didn't have a son made after all. And I got a chance to be with him and to hear this all the time. Dark valleys are unavoidable. Not only are dark valleys unavoidable, but they're unpredictable. You can't plan for them. <laughs> Remember, this is so wild this happened because here I was on the in Lowe's telling that funeral director, don't call me this weekend, you got it covered. Don't call me. And he laughed and said, don't worry. As I'm walking away, I'm telling you, I heard it. You're going to eat those words. An hour later, I'm getting called telling me that that pastor, both of those pastors, had gotten COVID and they were in a bind. Could you please help them? You see, you can't plan for them. You, you can't, can't, can't figure out, uh, you know, uh, what's going on. It's usually at the worst possible time. You see, uh, Jeremiah 4 and 20 says, Disaster after disaster is reported, for the whole land is destroyed. Suddenly, my tents are destroyed, my tents, curtains, in a moment. You say you can't plan for these things. You can't just set aside some time. Dark valleys are usually, usually unscheduled. If I was taking a poll right now and said, okay, how many want to have your, let's just go make a, how many want to just go ahead and have your valley Monday? Get over with and start on Tuesday something fresh. I don't want one period. You can have mine if you want it. No, that's not how it works. It's usually when you're trying to do something else. I remember D.C. and Daniel before we had cell phones and all we had was an answer machine. Every, every, I'm not kidding. Every time we would get ready to go on vacation, every time we get ready to go on vacation, I was getting ready to set this boy somewhere, the phone would ring within an hour before we left and the boys got to say, Daddy, don't answer that. Because they knew what was going to happen. Something would happen and we'd have to cancel. One time we got all the way up to, to, Virginia got in the hotel we were going to Bush Gardens and in the hotel I'd already give the clerk my number for, for, for the hotel and when we got in there it said Mr. Linton we got a call for you and we're checking in <laughs> I said okay what is it and, said, I, and I called my clerk and she said you know one of our guys in the church the truck driver I said yes he's got the wreck broke his hand so I went to my boys I said I'll be there in a couple of hours I got to come back from Virginia. And I remember going to my boys and I said, boys, I just got a phone call. They went, no, Dad, no. Please tell us, no, you're playing with us. I said, no, pack your stuff back up. You see, my plans was to be in Bush Gardens with my boys and my wife. God's plans would be intensive care for the next five days, unlimited, with this guy that could have died. So, so, they're unpredictable. You see, you know, uh, uh, most of the time when they had, we're not even good. How many times are you prepared for? We're not. So, so let's go again. They're unavoidable. They're, they're unpredictable. Oh, here's a good one. And they're impartial. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the uh, unrighteous. Let me tell you something. Nobody's immune. There's nobody in here that's got a shot big enough. You know, it's wild that I got COVID because I had the, all the shots. I even had a rabies shot. I got mine at the vet's office. I got all my, I got all my COVID shots. I got my rabies in the stomach, everything all at one time. I had everything and still got COVID. And I was going to the prison the three years it was shut down. Nobody going to prison. I was still going to prison because I went to be five. And I was going to the hospitals when I could go, and nursing homes when they would let me, and and doing funerals, and never got COVID. And my mother-in-law gets sick, and we have home health come in, and I believe that's where I got it from, because a home health nurse was saying, well, one of our nurses is out today because they've got COVID. I believe that's where, where it came from. And my wife and I have been so good, and we're going three years without getting COVID, and BAM! I'm still having the effects from it. I'm going, this was not supposed to happen. I got all my shots. Right. It happened. So, 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 don't you think 
that who you are has got anything to do with. It. Matter of fact, like sometimes I think, of, you know, if you got written on it, that, that, that's a guarantee that something bad is going to happen. You know, the Linda's Italian. Y'all know Linda's Italian, and Linda's family wanted to have a family reunion, but they can't meet because of, of the witness protection program. <laughs> My family wanted to have a family reunion, but they got to wait until the parole board meets. <laughs> <laughs> it's just saying, why me, God? Say, so why do you want me to learn? Why are you trying to teach me? Because with every pain, there comes a lesson. With every trial, there's a lesson. With everything, you know, I, I was talking with the funeral director Friday before the lady came in so I could talk to her about the funeral. And he's the one to come and pick up Bethany. And that night we'd gone to get something to eat at the La Riba restaurant and the lady that waited on me, she came up to me and she was speaking broken English and she said, she said, whenever you come in here, my heart hurts. And I was thinking, mine does when I leave, it's called heart burn. <laughs> She said, whenever you come here, my heart hurts. And I said, why? She says, God, think about your beautiful daughter. And tears were in her eyes. And so I had one of these. And so I took it off. I told her what it was. And I gave it to her. And with tears in her eyes, she said, thank you so much. And she came up by the table later. And she showed me her bracelet. And she said, she said thank you. And then I go that night to the nursing home, to the funeral home, and that's the guy that come picked up Bethany. And I said, I know by the time you got in there, everybody left. It was full. It was packed. Everyone was packed. Many of y'all were in there. It was packed. But everybody had left. It was just me and Linda. And we sat in that, sat in that room. And we held her hand. Stroked her hair. And said, you fought a good fight, girl. You finished your course. You kept the faith. We know God's got you now. And I can't think of anything that was more painful than that day. But I went on to a mighty army. And I put Bethany finally won her battle with cancer today. I didn't put Bethany was defeated. I didn't put Bethany just died. I put Bethany just won her battle with cancer. Because I know although the pain was going to continue here, her pain was gone. She's a preacher's daughter. That shouldn't, well, shouldn't have. I don't know if she's a preacher's daughter or not. She got cancer. She died. I can't explain it. I don't understand it all. Especially all the pain, having to rebuild her face, taking from four years old. I remember her very first surgery, four years old, then at five years old. The very first time she had surgery, we were the only ones allowed in the hospital because of the nature of her being beat. And there was there was a policeman at the, at, at the Johnson Memorial Hospital, Johnson County Memorial Hospital. There was a policeman at the bottom by the elevator. There was a policeman outside of her door. And the only ones that could come in was me. And at the time, it was Beverly, me and Beverly, and the social worker. That's it, because the abuse problem. And I remember, and then all the way through from four, all the way through until 17, when she had her last surgery, I thought something good was going to be taking place. And then she got in trouble. We got her out of that trouble. And then she got cancer. You see, it's unavoidable. It's unpredictable. Follies are impartial. You never know when these things are going to hit you. But what you do is, and we're going to get, we're going to get even deeper next week. I'm getting ready. To, I'm starting to wind down. I said, start. Don't get happy. Right. <laughs> the thing I like about the dark valleys the most. Is they're temporary. They're unavoidable. They're unpredictable.
unpredictable, they're impartial. They hurt, man, sometimes they hurt so bad. But they're temporary. You see, valleys have a beginning, but they also have an end. They don't last forever. This is not our permanent residence in the valley. God's taking care of us, and God understands. I like what Peter says. See, Peter, when he come along and wrote his epistles, the church was being prosecuted, persecuted, not persecuted by Rome. Rome was going through and, and killing people left and right. They were taking Christians and they were crucifying them on poles, and then they would light them on fire to light the city. So the streets of Rome were lined with crucified Christians, and then they were drenched in oil and set on fire to provide light for the city. Peter says, the suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God who has great plans for us in Christ, eternal glorious plans they are, will have you put together and on your feet for good. Wow. You see, they do not ask for it. It's not our permanent residence. Sometimes we think we're in a cave with no way out. I promise you, it's not a cave, it's a tunnel. And there is a light at the end, and it is not a train. God sees you, and God takes care of you. And then finally, I'm closing for today, and we'll start back next week. Once you remember this, your valley has a purpose. You rejoice. That though for now, for a short time, you have had to be distressed by various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more valuable than gold, which perishes through refined, perishes though uh, refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Again, this is First Peter talking. It's Peter talking in First Peter. Praise God. You see, see, yeah, you got to understand something about problems. Every problem we have has a Amen? God has a reason for taking you to the dark valleys. Look, full of doubt, full of despair, discouragement, defeat, financial valleys, relationship, emotional, spiritual valleys. In all of them, God gives us promises and He promised that He would get us through them. Because, yeah, like I said, every problem has a purpose. I love this. The little ones, the influential ones, the irritating ones. You see, God is more concerned with your character than your comfort. Any person that joins the military, their first few months there, they're not pampered. I heard the guys that's in the military laugh. <laughs> Y'all not pampered at all, were you? Did the sergeant say he could get you pillow right behind your head? And Make sure that you were in the, that you didn't have, didn't have to work in the sun and the rain. Steve, you, you had that day. You were in the Air Force. Y'all had a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a guy, a pastor in, from the Air Force, and I said, is it true? I said, when they were trying to recruit me when I was in high school, I was colorblind, so I didn't go. I said, is it true? I told my a guy I worked with him, a guy, a pastor, I said, uh, uh, I've pastored Marines, and I've pastored Army, and I've pastored Coast Guard, and I've pastored National Guard, but you're my first Air Force guy. I said, the Air Force recruiter told me that while the, the Marines were sleeping in mud in their tents in Vietnam, and the Army was doing virtually the same, that uh, y'all were in air conditioned barracks. <laughs> And that man said, that's the recruiter's story. <laughs> he said, his lips will tell you anything. He said, yeah, I had air conditioned barracks when the air conditioned worked. He said, but you know what I did every, every, day, every day? I said, what you do? He said, I, I think it was a, what's the big one? The C. Oh, I haven't got a big plane, a cargo plane. Whatever the big cargo plane is, he said, I would ride in that every day over enemy lines to resupply, restock supplies. And he said, it was such a nice, joyful ride that I sat in an armored chair. 
And he said the whole ride, he said bullets were going through the plane. And he said, bombs were bursting around us. And he said, my chair was being hit by live ammo from the ground. I said, whoa. He said, that wasn't even the best of it. He said, I forgot on the other side and we dropped off the supplies. He said, we picked up body bags and brought them back. He said, did the recruiter tell you all about all that? I said, no, sir, he didn't. And then I had a fellow that was in the Navy. He said, I was going to join the Navy, so I didn't have to go in the jungle. He says, I joined the Navy. This guy's a preacher now. He says, I joined the Navy, so I didn't have to go in the jungle. He said, I'm in boot camp, and we're all lined up. He says, line up, count off. One, two, three, four. He said, everybody. He said, I'm here to get volunteers for the sea leaves. Count off. Every odd man, count off. Uh, one, three, five, seven, nine. He said, y'all just volunteered. <laughs> He said, I was on the boat going and on the boat coming. The rest of the time, I was in the jungle making air, making airfields. And he said, I was dodging bullets on bulldozers. Bullets and bulldozers. He said, did the recruiter tell you about that? He said, but they weren't good to me. He said, the last couple of months, they wanted to give me back to civilization. He said, so they wanted to give me a soft job just to give me back use of the with utensils. And I wanted to fight somebody and shoot somebody every time they hollered at me. And I said, what'd you do? He said, they put me on some, they put me on a detail. He said, where I stuffed body bags and sent them home. Wow. I think about those guys all the time. The things they told me just keeps resonating over and over and over again. But you know what? Those same guys are the guys that I will go, I will go in a foxhole with any day, any time. Because those guys, they had character built so strong in them. They were amazing people when they come back over here. No matter what they went through over there, they were amazing when they got over here. You see, faith is built in the valleys of life. My husband Daniel, Daniel told me when he was over in Afghanistan. He said, Daddy, I said, Daddy, I said, Daniel, uh, do y'all have a high turnover? He says, yeah, either through death or, well, thank you, Daniel. Yeah. Either through death or transfer, or the guys run their contract now. And I said, well, where do you get guys from? He said, we get them from England. We get them from New Zealand. We get them from Australia. He said, they, I said, you know what my code name is over here today? I said, y'all don't tell them. I want to turn the video off right now. They leave it on. He said, you know what my call name is? I said, what? He said, Forrest Cone. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm from North Carolina. Talking to somebody from New Zealand and in England. They're going, what's up, Chuck? Hi, y'all. <laughs> He said, Daddy, I hated it when they sent us guys that hadn't experienced the real thing. And you had to lay your life in their hands. And when things got really tough, you wondered, were they going to stand with you or were they going to run? When you find somebody's been through something, you can tell it because they're different. Somebody's been through pain and realize that pain is productive and that pain has a purpose and that God allows them not to destroy you but to build you and to do something in you. Wow. They're the people that will hang with you. You ain't got to worry about it. They're there. They're solid. And so when I get around people and I find that they've been through something, I said, okay, we're going to be okay. You see, I'm getting ready to close. And though I walk through the darkest path, I will not fear the evil one. I'm going to put this up here. I love it. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you, talking about God, are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect me. And they comfort me. 
when you go into all these valleys, you have a promise from God that you're not going through it alone. Sometimes you can't hear him. You can't hear him. You don't see evidence of him. But he's there. I think about the time there was a bully. A bully taking bullying Daniel in the boys' room at Meadow School in uh, Benson, North Carolina. And Daniel said, Daddy, he bullies me every day. What do I do? I said, Daniel, you ain't gonna like what I'm gonna tell you. He said, What? I said, stand up to him. He said, Daddy, he's a lot bigger than I am. I said, stand up to him. He said, what if he hits me? I said, stand up to him. If you don't stand up to him, he will keep right on. The next day came, Daniel went to the bathroom. That guy came up to Daniel. And Daniel faced him right up to the face and looked at him and said, don't you dare touch me or talk junk to me again. Do you understand me? I'm not afraid of you. Daniel didn't see this. But I'd ask DC to keep an eye on him. DC was in the bathroom stall. And so while that guy's looking at Daniel, and Daniel's looking at him, DC steps out of the bathroom stall. You know how big he is. <laughs> anyway. Daniel never knew it. The guy said, yes, sir, Daniel. <laughs> I'll leave you alone. I promise I won't touch you again. I'll never say anything bad about you again. Daniel says, there you go. I knew you'd do it. Dad was right. And DC just opened the door. Climbed back in the stock. And shut it. Daniel walked away. So he said, Dad, what you said was right. I stood up to him and he backed down. Now somebody said good. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When you're going through something, when you're going through trials, and Satan's beating you and whipping you, remember, you're not by yourself. Even when you can't see him, God steps out of that little stall and goes. Trust him with everything you got. BJ, come play us something, bro. Play some more dogs. God's got this. God's got this. God's got this. Everybody stand. I know this was a laid back message today, but we laid back time. God's trying to show us, teach us things. Sometimes the valley humbles us. Sometimes a valley, a valley blends us. God's always doing something. Never have I noticed pain without a purpose. I reminded several people this week this same story. And you've heard me say it a hundred times. I said it in a lot of funerals. I had a guy one time ask me, his son had died, and he asked me, he said, where was God when my son died? And I said, the same place he was when his son died. He was on the throne and in control. And then I lost Bethany.
the Bible, if we're not careful, we'll turn away from God because we don't see Him, we don't recognize His presence, we don't see His protection, not knowing that it is there, we just don't see it. And we turn away from God in our valleys. That's not God's purpose. God's purpose is for to draw you closer to Him. And as we're drawn away from Him, we find ourselves getting further and further and further from God. Today, right now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if I'm talking to you and you know it, I'm talking to you right now, you let the valleys make you hard. You let the valleys make you harsh. You let the valleys make you rough. And you lost your sensitivity to the move of God. You may even stop praying like you used to. Stop reading like you used to. And I'm speaking to you right now and you're saying, you know what, I realize something. That I've been mad at the wrong person. I've been upset with the wrong person. get back where you were with God with nobody looking around every head bowed every eye closed we set that hand up quickly so I just acknowledge it bless them Lord bless them Lord bless them Lord bless them maybe you're here it's just hard you go through some hard ones I mean hard ones Every time you think you're getting some relief, it just seems to multiply. And you just need a break. God, God, I just need a break. God, I just need to feel your strength and your power. I need to see your hand grab mine. I just need to feel that right now. I feel your comfort. If I'm talking to you with every head bowed, every eye closed, everything's okay, but you just need, you need to feel it. You need to feel his hand. You need to... Feel his strength go and rush through your body. If I'm talking to you, raise that hand. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Maybe you know somebody else that's going through a trial. And you want to be there for them. But you can't because of several reasons. Maybe number one is it reminds you of a trial you went through. And you can't seem to get it differentiated between the trial you went through and theirs and it just brings back so much pain and so much memory that you can't help them not realizing that God in his infinite grace and mercy when you went through it he allows you to go through it so you could help that person that's going through it now don't run from them run to them help them maybe you know somebody that doesn't want help and they're going through trials and you just want to pray for them whatever it is we're all going to pray together right now okay Y'all pray with me. Father, I thank you for being God. I thank you that you never leave us alone. We've never gone through a valley without you with us. We haven't always felt you, but you're there, and we thank you. Lord, help us right now to draw close to you, closer than we've ever been. Because you said, when we go through the dark valleys, you would draw close to us. And we're going to hold on to that promise. Help us, Lord, to pull in and hold on to your plan and learn from the pain. We thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus. You got us, God, and we know it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. It really, 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 really felt good last week. So we're going to do it again. It was last week, week before. We're going to do it again. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. And after we say the Lord's Prayer together, we're close. And after we say the Lord's Prayer together, then I want Benny to take us. So we call them two nights. One take us in and one take us out. Okay, so, so I'm going to take us in and Benny's going to take us out. And remember, last week brought us here. And don't do like the guy did in B5. I said, who brought us here? He said, the sergeant from F-Block. No. 
<laughs> Who brought us here? You say our Father. And we'll start the Lord's Prayer. When we get through the minutes, he's going to dismiss us in prayer. Ready? Who brought us here? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for being with us in all the valleys that we have to go through, for guiding us and keeping us safe as we go. And Lord, thank you for the lessons that you have taught us. And if we weren't so blessed and hard-headed, it wouldn't have been so bad on us to trouble the Lord. And we thank you for being there with us and guiding us and carrying us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.